power management became a hot topic when portable computers first became popular, and we were all worried about our batteries running down. But in this era of the blue marble, when we're all more conscious of the environment, we tend to think of the whole planet as having a finite amount of energy, just like these NICAD cells we carry around. So energy savings has now come to desktop computing, along with new concerns for recycling and the elimination of unnecessary waste. Today, we'll look at one of the hottest new trends in personal computing, the green PC, on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. And by Hewlett Packard, personal computer division. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me today is Ray Norberti of PC Green Technologies. Ray, we're talking about green PCs today, ways to save energy while we're using our computer. I want to show you one neat program called the Green Explorer. I'm in the Home Office module here, and I can click on any one of these things here on my desk, like my PC, and it gives me information on how to save energy while I'm using my computer system. I can close that, and I can do anything here. I can click and say on the paper I'm using for my printer, and it gives me information on how not to waste energy, how to recycle paper, and so on. A very nice program called Green Explorer. You have something neat called PC Energy Saver. Tell me what that does, Ray. Well, it's a combination of hardware and software, Stuart. And what you do is you plug in your monitor, your printer, your CPU, and your keyboard into this unit. Then the keyboard extension on the back allows you to plug back into the CPU. You load software. Mm -hmm. It's both Windows and DOS. And in this case, we have the Windows version of the software up. And uh, it works looks much, like a screensaver. Absolutely. And what you do is you set timeouts for the uh, uh, either the monitor or the printer. But instead of just controlling the screen, we're controlling the whole computing system. Absolutely. So, for example, if I were to I were turn off the monitor right now, right, and I mouse just movement will bring I just it right move back my up. mouse, and the monitor's back up. Absolutely. Okay. Now uh, you have a report thing. Explain what this does, Ray. Well, the report thing will give you the idea, or at least give you information on how much you saved for your particular CPU. And what you see here is uh, three bars. The red bar represents the amount of time that the CPU has actually been on, and the green bar and the blue bar represent the actual the time. The fact is, we really see we use, use it. it very little, but Absolutely. this is all the time we had it plugged in. And that's all energy. energy saving. Two other neat things I want to show you on the green PC subject here. This is the new R4200 RISC processor from MIPS. In this tiny CPU, they have built in for the first time into the microprocessor power saving, power reduction, power management functions. Also, this is a nice book called The Green PC, Making Choices That Make a Difference. Handy little guide to how to save energy and be environmentally sound while you're doing uh, your personal computing. One major environmental problem with computers is what to do with the millions of old computers that get trashed every year because their owners buy a newer model. We found one great solution at the Computer Recycling Center in Mountain View, California. Thousands of computers have been rescued from the trash heap in Northern California and then donated to schools and nonprofit organizations. The first stop for these phased out PCs and Macs is the Computer Recycling Center in Mountain View. Director Mark Haas and his staff of 150 volunteers refurbish the units and then provide technical training for teachers. What we're trying to do is deal with five different problems that we've isolated. One is getting the hardware into schools. The second is supporting that hardware. Doesn't do much good if it's broken and the schools can't afford to take care of it. The third is making sure there's appropriate software available for educational purposes. The fourth is supporting the teachers and the training that they need to successfully use the computers. And the fifth is creating a method that community volunteers can express themselves as professionals in supporting the school system. Elise Webster's goal is to pick up enough computers to send one home with all 150 students at the Children's Cultural Center of Marin. We start with the oldest kids first. They get to have their computers. They get certified and they pledge to help. And then we go all the way down to the two-year-olds. And the excitement level is incredible. And the participation is incredible. And for the children, to actually see a computer being repaired and see what it looks like inside is such a learning experience. 
and for them to learn how to load the software and just do m just minor maintenance, it just demystifies that whole process and they become very courageous. The goal of the Computer Recycling Center is to set itself up as a model that can be replicated all across the country. If we're going to make a difference in our schools before the turn of the century, we need a McDonald's-like model that can go in every major city so the corporations have a conduit to put their computers in the school. In its first year of operation, the Computer Recycling Center has refurbished and placed 2,000 computers in Bay Area schools. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson. About two years ago, several computer companies got together with the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, to create the Energy Star program intended to make computing more energy efficient. One of the leaders in that group was Apple Computer, and here to show us their new energy efficient Mac LC 575 is Jackie Streeter of Apple. First of all, Jackie, explain this EPA Energy Star program. What does it mean if your computer is Energy Star certified? Right. What that means is that in sleep mode, your computer falls below, th is 30 watts or below in energy. And the EPA has asked that all uh, computer manufacturers comply to that standard, and we're very proud to say that we do. Any of our computers that were built uh, by 1986 at that point mm -hmm. that don't comply, we can use a smart bar product, which is a third party product, which makes it as compliant as our new computer. So you have an outside box like the one we just saw before. That's right. Let's right. take a look at the 575 and show us how the energy saving is built into the machine. Okay, we're going to move over to the screen. And in that screen, it allows you to adjust the time, the screen power saver, to whatever time is best for the way you work. If you move away from your computer for 15 minutes and you'd like that to shut down to 30 watts or less, that's what the computer will do for you. I think it's really good when you're getting drawn away from your sure. computer. So it looks like a screen saver, works like a screen saver, but once again, it's the power, it's the whole machine we're that's really right. controlling right, that's right here. And you go from 15 up to uh -huh. an hour, depending on where you want it to shut down. All right, let's talk about the whole picture, though, of taking care of the environment when you're, when you're making a computer, selling a computer, recycling a computer, and so on. What else is Apple doing uh, in the area of, of environmentally sound computing? Well, Stuart, like all manufacturers, we're, we're concerned with looking at the environmental impact of our product before we get to the point where we need to recycle it. And keeping that in mind, what we've done is we look at the total product life cycle. Okay, so Let you've got a little, little diagram here that shows yes. us the different pieces. Uh -huh. And what it shows you is that we begin with design. We look at, uh, of course, what we're putting into our product. Mm -hmm. We look at an easy way to take the computer apart. We look at labeling the pieces to make sure the recyclable, the recy people who are doing the recycling mm -hmm. uh, know what, pro what material we have in it. All right, what, what about the packaging part? I mean, that's where we've seen a lot of waste, a lot of junk in the past. Right. Well, in manufacturing, we limited CFCs in the, that process, and then we moved to packaging. Mm -hmm. And in the packaging, I want to show you one of our old boxes. I think you'll find this interesting. It was a white box, mm -hmm. okay? And inside the box, we have Lots a packing list, right, the, and the plastic container, all of which is not recyclable. Mm -hmm. Well, today, what we have is our new packaging. Uh, this is recyclable. Here's the, uh, here are the instructions, and here's your cable. That's it, a lot better. Much kinder to the environment. And you can also see the cable while it's That's right, up. so you can see what you're buying. Then we also, uh, with packaging, we talked about the white box is not as kind to the environment as the craft box, mm -hmm. because this is all recyclable. So most of our products are now, uh, we're using the brown box. Then when you move to, as you can see, to the end, um, the reuse recycle, right. we're We've got what we ha call the Apple Clean Earth okay, campaign. And this is your toner cartridge. That's in our this toner box. cartridge. Yeah. What the customer does is once you've used the toner cartridge, you put it back in the bag. Again, this is recyclable. Mm -hmm. You send that back to us. You just save this box, this label. You send it back. We'll make sure it gets remanufactured. Mm -hmm. That way you don't have to worry about disposal. All right, nice features. Thank you Thank very much. You. Thank you. All right, one approach to recycling old computers is to fix them and give them to someone else, as we saw before. Another approach is to break them down so you can recycle the basic raw materials inside. That's the approach at Advanced Recovery, a computer recycling center in Bellevue, New Jersey. Eric Buchel was a graphic artist whose hobbies were environmental art and collecting spare parts for computers. The first time he ever took apart a monitor and discovered that it contained almost five pounds of lead, he decided it was time to set up a recycling business that would keep all the materials from discarded computers out of landfills. You're talking about um, uh, machines that are, are literally laden with plastics 
uh, steel, copper, insulated wires. You just can't take these and just let's, let's throw them under the bed. And that's what the country's turning into now. You, it's equivalent to asking your kid to clean his room and they're taking all the garbage and throwing it under the bed. I mean, it's, it just makes sense to start breaking the stuff down. Buchel extracts the precious metals from circuit boards, mainframe processors, and connectors. He also sells salvageable parts, mainly to third world countries who are desperate for affordable components. But most of the equipment that shows up at advanced recovery has been very poorly handled and is beyond repair. This is a piece of plastic. It's a thermoplastic. It comes out of a, a computer monitor, which would normally be landfilled. What we do is we break it off of the, the, the machines, the monitors, and uh, first it goes through a wash, and then it's ground up, and the pellets look something like this when they're finished uh, and, and ready to be remanufactured into new monitors. The EPA now classifies CRTs as hazardous waste, so companies can no longer just dump them in landfills. That's why many are willing to pay advanced recovery to dispose of them properly. These companies are going to have to either face that they're going to have to have these properly disposed of or, or recycled, or, uh, or they're just going to have to hold on to these, these monitors. Um, uh, and, and either way, it's going to cost them money. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Patterson. Now, computers aren't the only energy wasters. Peripherals like printers can also consume lots of electricity. One of the leaders in getting printers to conform to the EPA's Energy Star program is Hewlett Packard. Here to show us their new LaserJet 4L printer is Jane Bell of HP. Jane, let's try to quantify the problem here. It doesn't seem like, you know, turning my printer off or turning my monitor off in the big picture is going to save a lot of energy across the country. What are we talking about? Yeah, the EPA estimates uh, show that it is a big problem. It accounts for about 5% of the commercial sector's energy use. So computer products are eating up 5% of all our energy. That's right. Wow. And it's expected to grow to about 10% by the year 2000. And if we use Energy Star programs, what happens? If, if all manufacturers would make products that are Energy Star compliant like these, and if people would buy those, we would save enough energy every year to power Vermont, Maine, and New Hampshire. So it's not just saving five cents on my bill, it really is a significant problem. It's significant. Problem. All right, let's talk about the 4L printer. And what, what have you guys at HP done to make this save energy and be environmentally sound? There's two features that are energy saving in this product. One is the um, intelligent on-off feature. So you don't have to worry about whether it's on or okay. off or whether it's in energy save mode. It goes into that automatically. All right, so it's sleeping right now. Print That's something. Right. Let's see how quick it okay. takes for this to go start itself up. We'll send a job down. Okay. You can see it's coming down. The lights are blinking. Mm -hmm. So it's thinking, and it's going to just crank itself up on its own. That's right. And there it goes. Okay. The rollers have started. The fuser is at temperature. There's an instant on fuser in the product. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to wait for that to heat up. It's there. Okay. So it didn't take any longer to print this job just because it was in sleep mode. That's right. All right. Tell me, while it's printing, tell me about in the design of the machine, how are you conscious of the environment? environment? Another way is with econo mode. And what that is, it's puts down half the toner on a sheet of paper and it extends your consumable life and saves you half what you would have normally spent on a toner cartridge. Okay, so even though it's a laser printer, I can do a half toner page just for a draft and save, save toner. That's right, it's like draft mode. All right, so it's printed its little job here and I guess it, it's, it's, it's really turned itself off. We're just hearing the fan right now. Is that what's going That's on? That's right. The fuser's down now and we're just hearing the fan run and it'll run for just maybe 15 more seconds. Okay, so it's, it's really turned off the part that's chewing up a lot of electricity. That's right. It's keeping the fan on to make sure it's at the right temperature before mm -hmm. it turns out. Let's mm -hmm. just listen a second see if it's going to turn itself off. Yeah. And it does, and mm -hmm. I didn't press anything. Look that's my, right. My hands. All right, what else can you tell us about the printer uh, with regard to the environment and saving energy? We have a toner cartridge recycling program. So when the toner cartridge is depleted, you send it, send it back to HP. It's postage paid. Mm -hmm. We disassemble it and recycle all the materials in it. Okay. What about the, the parts that are inside the machine? They're also coated so that when the, the product has reached the end of its life mm -hmm. and it goes to an HP facility for recycling, there is coating on the bottom oh, of most of these parts. Yeah, right, right over here. That's right. Okay, so that means when we turn the machine back in, people know already what kind of material it is, what sort of bin, what recycling process to That's put it right. in. That's right, and they know what kind of flame retardants are in it. Mm -hmm. 
Now, give us, give us the numbers on this, Jane. When it's in the sleep mode, how much energy is it consuming? When it's in sleep mode, yeah. it's down at five watts. Okay, and the Energy Star program says 30, so That's you're way right. under that. That's right, we're way under five it. Five watts compared to what when it's actually printing? 180. So this is a gigantic savings, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. All right, what advice would you have uh, in the printing area for how all of us can save energy? Well, if you don't have an Energy Star compliant PC or printer and you're not using it, we really might recommend you turn it off. A lot of people just leave it on the whole they time. They leave it on all it doesn't the time. Hurt to turn it, off. it doesn't hurt to turn mm -hmm. them off, not at all. And then um, we do s allow the use of recycled papers in these printers, and we recommend people use recycled content papers mm -hmm. if they're a good quality paper. And to print on both sides yeah. of the sheet, and when you're done printing, recycle you okay. know, what you're not going to use. All right, thank you, Jane. One huge environmental problem related to computers is the discarding of old floppy disks. Well, we found two companies in the Seattle area that are recycling old floppies. There are currently more floppy disks in the world than people, and more come off the assembly line every day. But when a software company releases an upgraded version of its product, they don't want the old version taking up space on the retail shelf. So what happens to all that unsold, outdated software? And it turned out some people were shredding it, some people were uh, uh, burning it. Uh, it was being thrown into landfills and run over back and forth with bulldozers in the hopes that that would destroy it. Their key issue, of course, is to protect the intellectual property. They have to remove this, uh, this dated, if you would, intellectual material so it doesn't compete with the new product they've just released. But there was no system established to salvage the valuable raw material, namely the high-quality diskettes that software publishers require for their products. That's why Green Disk was born. This facility recycles everything from the box to the shrink wrap to the instruction manuals. But the main focus is the creation of reusable diskettes. Green Disk degausses the disks then sends them to software manufacturer Microdisc to be reformatted. Then they go into Green Disc packaging and back into the marketplace. There's a, a real niche market for us out there with these recycled diskettes. There are a lot of companies that are very, very environmentally conscious. Uh, these discs are sold at a very low price anyway, and so you get their attention to begin with. We explain in our advertising that these are very, very high quality diskettes that come with a lifetime guarantee and they're already pre-formatted. And a lot of uh, small to medium-sized companies have been buying these diskettes from us. We call these discs worn, written once, read never. Because they've been used in the manufacturer's software, they started off as higher quality discs in the first place. Microdisc collects outdated software from the publishers and then channels it directly to the Green Disc Recycling Center. The goal is to capture and recycle two million discs a month. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson. Computer manufacturers can help the environment in two ways, by not creating hazardous waste in the manufacturing process and by building in energy efficiency in the end product. One company that gets high marks in both those areas is Compaq, and here to show us their new Energy Star certified computer is Walt Rosenberg of Compaq. Walt, first of all, let me ask you this question. A lot of computer users are under the impression that it's a bad thing for your computer to turn it on and turn it off and turn it on, and so they leave it on 24 hours a day. Is that, is that a myth? Well, Stuart, that goes back to really an old school of thought where disk drives used to crash on a more frequent basis. The technology of disk drives has come so far that that's no longer a concern. So really one of the easiest ways to save energy uh, from your PC is just turn it off. So from a monitor point of view, the electronics point of view, it really doesn't matter that much? No, it doesn't really matter. All right, now of course another way to do that is to build in power management as we've seen, and you guys have done that in the Presario. Show us how the power management feature works here. Okay, on this uh, particular product, you're going to go to the Compact Welcome Center. This is the way it boots up. This is what so you So when you see. get it out of the box, this is what you're supposed to see. This, is, this product was made for ease of use. Okay. Go to the Control Center, and there's going to be a power management icon. And you click on that icon, and it allows you to set the monitor timeout time, and we'll use 10 minutes, and the hard drive, and we'll use 10 minutes for that as well. And uh, after those set periods of time, the monitor will power off, the hard drive will power down. This product was made 
such that you do leave it on all okay, the time. Okay, so we're not powering down the computer itself, just the drive and the monitor. Just the drive and the monitor. This product has an integrated answering machine and fax modem, so it just allows you to consolidate appliances in your home or business office. Okay, and, and because of that, you don't want the thing off because in case the phone rings, sure. it, it's got to be there. It will go into the sleep mode, and when the phone rings or you get a fax, it powers up, uh -huh. takes the answer, uh, the answering from either the phone or the fax, and after that set period of time, it powers back down again. All right, so how much energy are we saving here typically? The thing turns the monitor off, it turns the hard drive off, the CPU stays on. How much do I save? Uh, from a standpoint of when this thing's running fully loaded, it's about 80 to 100 watts. So mm -hmm. we go into the power down mode, it's running at about 25 watts. That's pretty good savings. The saving, what, what does that turn into in, in money, Walt? Would well, you know? the savings wise, for the average user and the average price of electricity is about eight cents a kilowatt hour in the U.S. So for the average user, that's about anywhere from 100 to 125 dollars a year that they'll save on their power bill. Just for the PC, not counting printer, not counting anything else, I guess. Absolutely. Let's talk about the manufacturing process I mentioned before. And one of the concerns I know in the past in making computers is the use of CFCs and, and hazardous waste material. What have you done to change and, and deal with the CFC problem? Well, Compaq was one of the leading companies to develop technologies with our suppliers to allow us to eliminate CFCs from our manufacturing processes. Compaq currently is 100% CFC free in the manufacturing process. In turn, we're working on our suppliers. We want our suppliers to have that same 100% non-CFC process. Is there a trade-off there? I mean, what did you have to do to get rid of CFCs? Well, for us, there was significant technology changes that had to have in our happen in our manufacturing process. So our manufacturing teams were very aggressive with our design engineering folks to develop a process that allows us to eliminate the CFCs. Mm -hmm. Now, is this the green PC, or are you guys trying to implement this across the line? Well, Compaq has a philosophy of not developing a single green PC, but to identify environmental features that we can apply across all our product lines. Mm -hmm. So. The features that you see in this product, you're going to see in other product lines as well. All right, Walt, thank you very much. Well, thank you. That's our look at green PCs. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the random access file this week, there's news of more choice and lower prices for portables. Dell Computer has introduced the new Latitude line of low-cost 46 portable PCs that come bundled with a suite of communication software. Included in the Latitude Com Central package are America Online, ComWorks from Traveling Software, and the Radio Mail Wireless Messaging Service. The Dell Latitude laptops weigh about six pounds, and prices start at $1,700. Hewlett-Packard has released the latest in its Omnibook line of super portable PCs. The Omnibook 430 PC weighs 3 pounds and has a full-size keyboard. It comes loaded with Windows and DOS and lets you load your own applications. Prices for the new 430 PC range between $12 and $1,600. Meanwhile, Apple has cut prices on three of its PowerBook portable models. Prices are now 9 to 14 percent lower on one of the all-in-one PowerBooks and two models of the Apple PowerBook Duo. Apple also announced it has started shipping the new Quadra 610 DOS compatible, which lets you switch back and forth between Macintosh and DOS-based applications. The Quadra 610 operates on a dual-chip system. A Motorola 68 LCO40 chip powers the Mac environment, and Intel's 46SX chip runs both DOS and Windows-based software. The Quadra 610 carries a price tag of $1,579. Silicon Valley Bus Company has come up with a device that lets Macintosh users plug in PC-compatible keyboards and mice. The Keystone Control Panel plugs into the Mac's Apple desktop bus socket and will let Mac users try out all those three-button mice and trackballs that PC users have to choose from. The Keystone even lets you mix and match an Apple keyboard with a PC mouse or vice versa. The Keystone interface is priced at $99. Computer Chronicles became the first television program to be delivered via computer this past week. The Internet Multicasting Service in Washington, D.C. began feeding the program as computer data to users around the world. The combined video and audio signal will be carried weekly on the M-Bone, which is received at a variety of research centers and large corporations around the world. Internet in a Box, the software application that offers point-and-click access to the Internet, will now be used in an experiment to deliver Internet access over cable TV. The software will be installed on PCs at several schools in Virginia, then hooked into Jones Intercable. The broadband Internet connection will give students direct access to the multimedia components on the Internet, like space shuttle and satellite images. 
Watermark Systems has launched an electronic service that matches job seekers to available positions. It's called the Interactive Jobs Network. Job seekers create a detailed profile of their qualifications, which is loaded onto the IJN database and then matched to positions for which they qualify. Employers can also search the database of applicant listings. For information on joining the network, call 1-800-323-DATA. And if you're looking for a gift to send to a favorite cyber friend, how about a t-shirt with a symbol that only a dedicated emailer could love? A company called Elsewhere in Vermont specializes in t-shirts with com computer industry slogans, sayings, and symbols, such as the email symbol for the smiley face. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Patterson. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. And by Hewlett Packard, personal computer division. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated and information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a newsletter, call 1 800 799 4949 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use and information on the definitive guide to keeping your organization's software legal.